physicsinfo.co.uk Another in the series of Physics GCSE Tutorials Topic 8 Energy Combined Science This topic ties in very closely with Topic 3 from Paper 1. There is no separate science content, so have a look at the Topic 3 video as well. We have seen in Topic 3 that the energy of a system can be changed in different ways. The first, through work done by forces, that would be a push or a pull, or an electric equipment where electricity can be converted into heat or sound or light, and finally, through the heat of friction. And so far, we've come across three equations that can be tested mathematically. The first one, gravitational potential energy. Gravitational potential energy, GPE, is mostly about energy gained by height. The higher something is, the greater its gravitational potential. And the calculation is GPE equals mass times gravitational field strength times height. And on Earth, the gravitational field strength is 10 newtons per kilogram. We should probably talk about change in height and change in GPE. The second equation we've learned is the one for kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is basically the energy due to movement. Kinetic energy equals a half times mass times velocity squared. And velocity, of course, is speed in a given direction. It is the V squared that is forgotten most often. Just like in topic three with the swing boat, a pendulum is an excellent example of gravitational potential energy being converted to kinetic energy and back to gravitational potential again. This is an example of a pendulum at the Smithsonian Institute and the Earth turns underneath, allowing them to tell the time. There's a similar pendulum at the Science Museum in London. The last of these three equations is the one for work done. Work done equals force times distance. Just remember that it's the distance travelled in the direction of the force. So in this instance, how far the elephant travels up the ramp, not the gain in height. If you know the force applied by the boy pushing the trolley, and you know the distance he travels up the slope, you can work out the work done. And you can also work out the gain in gravitational potential energy, mgh. But these figures won't be the same because pushing up the slope will encounter friction. So there will be energy lost through heat. Here's an example of the work done in dragging a five kilogram brick two meters up a slope. There's then a second calculation, lifting the brick from the floor to the top of the slope, which is one meter from the ground. The difference between these two is the energy lost through friction. One new equation we have in this topic is power. Power is the rate of doing work. In other words, work done divided by time. If you lift some weights from the ground, weight equals mass times gravity, then there will be a gain in gravitational potential energy. Knowing how long this takes means you can work out the power, because power is energy over time. Do it multiple times, say lift the weights from the ground to a shelf 10 times, and then divide by 10 and you'll get a more accurate answer. Power is the one new equation from this topic. So looking at this example, power is the rate of doing work, 
The work done is force times distance. So a five kilogram brick lifted one meter is five times 10 times one MGH, which is 50 joules. If you take the time for 10 lifts, you will get a more accurate answer. So 50 times 10 divided by the time for 10 lifts. And we mustn't forget the unit of power, which is the watt. Watt is the unit of power. And that's it. Don't forget to look again at topic three. And thank you for watching.